This is about a 1950 GE clock radio, which is very, very unique and special, at least to me, and is the third and final of the sentimental radios that I'm hoping I can talk Retro Chad into repairing for me. Story behind this one. This was my stepfather's radio when he was a little kid, and I repaired it in 1983. There used to be a, either a Red Rider or some other like sticker on the top, which is gone. His mother had this and it didn't work and I repaired it. I did something very unique to this radio, which I vaguely remember doing. The radio wasn't really fixable, so I did a transplant. Of course, it's not worth anything now as a collector's item. Although the transplant was done in '83, for whatever reason, the original radio was unfixable, or at least I couldn't get it to work. So I must have completely gutted the chassis and emptied it right out. It's just an empty box. It has the original tuning capacitor and down inside the original volume control. I had taken this GE clock radio circuit board out of another radio. I remember the radio, they have them on eBay. And the front of the GE clock radio has this exact style knob, except it's clear plastic. And this circuit board like this inside. This radio I picked up for four bucks at a Salvation Army type store. It also has a printed circuit board but it's flat instead of on edge. And it won't fit in here to do the conversion again. I tried doing some capacitor work because all it would do is hum. This is the original capacitor wired back in. Sorry about the chair. And when I was working on it, I saw some smoke come out in between the audio output transformer and this IF can, which there's a couple components down there. I tried messing around. To see if I could get anything out of it, but I couldn't. It's an interesting conversion. What I must have done is actually desoldered and removed the tuning capacitor from the circuit board and remotely wired in the original tuning capacitor mounted on this chassis. I had also desoldered and removed the original volume control, which was here. And as you can see, the three wires lead in and are wired to the original volume control mounted inside the chassis. The rest of the chassis is completely stripped out. There also must have been a ferrite antenna inside this plastic tube on the back. Whereas now it's mounted on this little bracket. And wired into the tuning capacitor. When I had done this conversion in 1983, the radio worked fantastic. Had the tube sound, and she was delighted, and she never knew what I did to it. She thought I repaired the radio, and she used this radio. This one's unique because again they put the uh, audio output transformer on the board instead of on the speaker basket and they've also done the same thing inside of here I was going to try using this board to repair the other one or take this entire circuit board and put in the other radio but this circuit board's too big to fit 
and I'd actually like to repair this because this is one of the few remaining pieces of workmanship that I did when I was a kid back when I could have fun and back before everybody was so fussy and picky and it worked and it worked fantastic and it was done like 25 years ago and at the time the capacitor still worked but I may have fried something else so I put the original tuning capacitor back in so that Retro Chad could troubleshoot it if he's interested. If he is interested in taking on these three projects for me, I'd offer him as, as part of the deal this as a gift because I'm never going to do anything with it. It's in fantastic shape once you figure out how to open it again. I had this in another video. My grandmother had the same makeup case because she had this set of luggage. And everybody that collects stuff is familiar with this TV. It was the very first portable TV by Sony. It has no horizontal output because of bad caps, but it is fixable. This TV cost you $400. I know Spats Bear has one and showed his. His hasn't got any horizontal output either. And it uses the four-way plug, two pins being 110 and two pins being 12 volts. I don't have the car cord though. Got some original paperwork, the original earphone. And of course the uh, makeup case that Sony must have bought from uh, Travel Smart, which was the brand of luggage that my grandmother had that would have perfectly matched this. Of course, Sony rebadged the suitcase. All channel micro TV. And yes, it is. Although it was before the mandate of the clicking UHF tuners, obviously. That's a sharp looking little thing, even to display. Retro Chad can have this if he wants it. I'll ship all four items in one big box. Some other interesting things I've picked up. This is a really nice industrial grade cassette deck. It works and has pretty good sound. It's got a weak belt. It's almost like a school one, but Zenith never did stuff for schools. But the mic can be used as a built-in mic or released and pulled out as a hand mic. That's kind of neat. This might be something Cassette Master might really enjoy. Battery compartments in real good shape. No signs of leaking batteries. Storage for the cord. Beautiful near mint condition girder and panel bridge and turnpike set in the box. The box is gorgeous. Set was very well taken care of. Five dollars at the Goodwill store. I've been grabbing and snagging these clock radios when I can because they're cheap and nobody makes them anymore. This is a great flip clock version. Really nice looking radio. Another GE. I got about 30 seconds left. Subwoofer. I'm just buried in stuff. So if Retro Chad would be interested in giving me just a rough estimate price. You now the one traveler radio burns a tube out after five minutes of operation. The smaller one, the 